Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chen Chen, and on this channel, we talk about creating photorealistic 3D assets. So for today's video, I have something a little bit random. Um, I have a recording of how I texture this asset inside a Substance Painter, and uh, I'm currently learning some new stuff to make new art. So I don't have anything. Uh, planned for this week, so I figured I'll just release for you guys and maybe it's helpful for some people It's another very ornamented object uh, If you've seen enough of my video, you will see that I'm pretty obsessed with ornaments and uh, What I'm gonna show you today texturing it's probably something you've seen before but um, it might be new for some people So I have this helmet that I already built inside of substance painter But uh, the reference I was following it was very blurry and small I had to find something else to guide my texturing mostly. So this is the main reference I'm going to follow. And I would just want to circle out some areas that um, I think is distinctive to me. And um, it's kind of a planning before I start texturing on uh, what kind of things I want to capture from my main reference. So uh, it's very obvious that inside of uh, some cavities, you got this dark detail. And I feel one another thing I really want to capture is uh, this kind of warm breakup breakup tone for the material, and uh, there's some highlights at more of an edge area for the metal. Uh, in general, this is not a super complex um, look, and maybe some um, color breakup in some areas to introduce some different like patterns or some different tones for the texture. So. I think in general, that's the plan. After the baking, before I start texturing, I always like to throw in some smart material that I made before, just to see uh, the quality of the bake, to see if I need to adjust the setting a little bit, maybe go back and bake some um, area better. In general, everything looks pretty good to me, so I think I would just start my texturing. Uh, first, I will create a fill layer, and this will be the base metal material and I will have some pretty simple metal textures, mostly for the diffuse, the height, and the roughness. This is not a mega scan texture. I actually created the roughness and the height inside of Photoshop with a tileable metal that I already have. That's why the height looks super crazy. So the way to uh, reduce that uh, bump a little bit is just to add a contrast layer contrast filter on that map and if I reduce the contrast I can reach my desired height. So far this looks pretty good as a starting uh, point. It's a little bit too shiny so I think I'm going to add some adjustments to the roughness and uh, bring it down a little bit and matching my reference a little bit better. This entire helmet is a metal material so I'm going to set my metallic at 1. The next thing I want to do is to scatter around some warm tone to the metal. I want it to mostly be around the cavity or AO area, but I want it to be not so obvious that it's just around cavity area, so um, something that's a little bit more scattered. I created another fill layer, this time it only affects color because in terms of spec and height, I want just the same effect as the first fill layer that I had. The color itself is super strong, so I'm going to tone down the opacity for this layer. And now I'm going to figure out a good mask for it to get the effect I want. I kind of like this cloudy scattering look that's mostly around AO. So if I just bring down the opacity again, uh, I want to see what it looks like. I think I'm getting that discoloration that I want. Adding the next fill layer and the next material, I'm going to create a dark grunge in between the ornaments that we can see from the reference. 
I got some plaster type of material that has a very rough spec. Uh, the detail of the texture itself is not super duper important. I wanted something that uh, has some kind of discoloration to it, just in case we can see some. But in general, this is going to be pretty dark, and uh, mostly we just need a good mask for this material. I'm going to adjust the color to the level I like. Now it's time to add a mask for the material. I'm gonna go through some of the smart masks that's already there and see if there's anything that works pretty well that will save me some work. This one looks okay, it's a little too much. I think this one looks much better. This is the reference, by the way, that I used to model this helmet. Um, the ornaments are different. I kind of made my own. I still don't like it very much. I think I'm gonna keep trying some other masks. I actually like this one much better. It's a little bit more refined. I do need thickness around it as well, but I think I can combine some different masks together to get that look. I really like how this one looks and I think I will combine that with the dirt one that I got previously. The next detail I want to create is some shinier edge for the metal. So I just duplicated the base metal material and I will adjust the color and um, roughness a bit, bring a little bit higher compared to the base metal. After I'm happy with this material, I will create a mask for it as well where it only goes around the edges. I like how this edge looks, but it's a little bit too solid. Uh, I need it to be a little bit more broken up. So what I would do, just add another few layer on top of the mask and utilize some of the really great grunge masks that Substance comes with. I will adjust this grunge to the proper scale that I needed and just gonna multiply on top and see what I get. All the basic elements of the helmet is there, but it still looks quite boring. I think I need to add some discoloration on some of the flatter surface. I'm gonna try to add some kind of uh, orange-yellow-ish tone to the metal. First, I'm going to create another metal layer where the only thing that's changed is the color. Gonna make it a lot more orange and reddish. And then I'm going to create a mask that will cover some of the flatter surface using this material.
I think this mask looks pretty good for what I need, but this mask is covering some of the ornamented details, and I only want this discoloration on the flat surface, not on the ornaments. So I'm going to create another mask that is black around the ornaments. I'm gonna multiply that one on top of this mask to get rid of those areas. I think the yellow orange detail was a little too fainted. It was not what I imagined. So to help with that, I brought in another reference that matching what I was thinking uh, to help me adjust that layer. Um, probably the mostly it, the problem is the mask. I think this version is looking much better. The last thing I have to do is just to balance everything out. I'm going to adjust all the material at the same time to make sure all the detail I added is doing what I needed to do and is visible. Substance Painter is getting a little bit slow for me at this point. Uh, one thing you can do if you're running into the same problem is to change your viewport texture to 2K. Uh, right now, I'm looking at everything at 4K full resolution. That is everything I have for you guys. It's pretty straightforward one. I hope you're still enjoying watching the whole process. Hopefully soon I have some new content for you guys. I'm currently learning some new softwares and try to create different art on different platforms. Uh, I don't want to say too much yet because I don't know if it's going to happen. If you enjoyed today's video, please like the video and subscribe to my channel. I will see you in the next one.